So now we're going to focus on nutrient dynamics of terrestrial ecosystems. Nutrient cycling in terrestrial ecosystems involves highly localized exchanges between plants, microbes, and their physical environment. And the emphasis here is, well, there's two emphases. One is that it's highly localized. So most of the exchanges between plants and their environment happen on very short distances, not long distances. And there's interactions between plants, microbes, and the physical environment, so the soils themselves. And that's a large part of understanding the dynamics of nutrient cycling. Now, nutrients cycle locally, and we can see that by taking a look at the source of plant nutrients. So if you have your box, for example, that represents your ecosystem, there could be inputs of nutrients from outside the ecosystem, recycling of nutrients within that ecosystem, and if we say the rock layer, the bedrock, is outside of the ecosystem, inputs from bedrock into the ecosystem, so that would be weathering. And we can compare the relative importance of deposition, for example, or fixation coming from outside the system, recycling within, and then weathering, so transfers from the bedrock to the soil layers and the plants themselves. So here, the authors compare two systems. The first is Harvard Brook, which again is a deciduous, primarily deciduous forest in northeastern U.S. Deposition and fixation for nitrogen is only 7% of all the nitrogen that plants use, and 93% comes from recycling. Phosphorus, which is a rock-derived element, somewhere on the order of 10 or less percent comes from weathering, and somewhere on the order of 90% is recycling, and a little bit comes from deposition of dust. Potassium and calcium are similar to phosphorus, and then 10 or 30% come directly from rocks, and still the majority is recycling. If we take a look at the tundra, for example, in northern Alaska, only 4% of nitrogen and phosphorus comes from deposition or fixation, almost very little comes from weathering, and almost all of it comes from recycling. The reason why weathering for phosphorus is so less important in the tundra than it is here is that the plants of the tundra are often growing in organic soils and their roots can't touch rock. So below them might be permafrost, which is frozen, which have frozen organic soils that don't have access to bedrock. And these plants have to work within the organic layer. So almost everything that they use comes from recycling within the ecosystem and very little weathering. So if we want to understand the dynamics of nutrients within ecosystems, by and large, we have to understand recycling. On longer time scales, weathering is going to become important, as well as deposition. But on the short term, it's really recycling and understanding the way that nutrients transfer from one box to another within the ecosystem itself.